Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Member 365 webinar on forms, mastering data insights, creating forms, and analyzing analytics or reports. My name is Carlo McDangle. I am customer success coach here in Member 365. I will be your host in this afternoon's uh, webinar. We will be muting everyone during the course of the webinar, but don't worry if you have any questions, please write them down on the Q&A button right below your Zoom screen. And then at the end of this webinar, we will be addressing any of your questions or concerns. And everyone that's participating in this webinar will be given a copy of uh, this video. We'll be recording it uh, by the way, and we will be posting it as well on our um, knowledge base section in the help desk uh, section of your program. So uh, forms, do you wanna know more about your contacts or your members? Well, one way is to collect information via the forms. Forms are available in your member 365 program, so better utilize it. So what's in store for this webinar? We will be discussing the different types of forms that's available in your program. How do we create a form? And um, how do we attach a form if we can attach it to a specific uh, module? And then, of course, analysis and review pertaining to the reports, best practices in setting up a form, and last but not least, our question and answer session. Okay. So what are the different types of forms? Let's uh, dive into... Uh, member 365 program <clears throat> in this page if you go to modules forms and then create form the system will bring us to this page the form builder okay we have different types of forms available in your program we have the membership form event registration contact demographic form organization demographic web submission directory a test form or a random quiz form so all are designed to collect information uh, or attributes from your contacts. But the ones that we'll be discussing in this webinar this afternoon is about membership, directory, and web submission form. The other forms, we will be reserving them for future webinars. So uh, stay tuned on upcoming webinars regarding those very important modules as well. Okay, so membership. And um, directory form, what's the, um, the difference in the commonality of membership and directory form? Well, the commonality or the, the, uh, uh, the similarities of membership and directory form is they have the same objective. Um, they collect information from your, from your contacts, attributes or information that are beyond what was uh, being collected on the normal application form, such as name, email address, birthdays, physical address. Now, if you want to collect other information, such as um, like uh, their area of interest or their favorite sports team, or if you want to collect uh, their um, certification, if you want them to upload a certificate or a license, you can do that by using a membership or a directory form. Now, what's the difference between a membership and a directory form? Well, the main difference actually is if you have a directory, a specific question can be made filterable on, a, on your directory, meaning like say, you're searching for specific contacts in a directory and there's a filter in there, a filter criteria where you, you tell the system, you tell the directory, I want to pull contacts that responded to this particular form question, which is like, as an example, those who want to volunteer only on a Sunday and the system will pull up just those specific contacts that responded Sunday being their choice of volunteer day. So. In a membership form, you cannot do that, but on a directory form, you can, okay? Um, however, if you have a directory and you're using a, a directory form, we recommend that you set up all the questions instead in the directory form. Instead of maintaining two forms, a membership and a directory form, the advantage of that is that when you generate a report, you only have to generate one report, just the directory form, okay? 
Uh, but if that's not an issue for you, then you can set up uh, two separate forms, membership and directory. But uh, just a word of caution, do not or make sure that uh, you do not set up the same type of questions in the membership and directory form. You, we do not want to uh, um, become redundant in terms of the questions that we're asking on both forms. But our recommendation, if you have a directory and you're using a directory form, just create a directory form. That way you can run and generate just a single report only, okay? So how do we create a, um, a membership in a directory form? Like I said, they're very synonymous in terms of setting up uh, the questions or setting up that form. So let's dive into the CRM again. Again, on this page, all we have to do is click on the Create button in here, and the system will bring us to this page, basically filling up the fields like uh, the name uh, of the form. But in this, for the purpose of this webinar, let's pull up a form that we've already created. It's much uh, uh, simpler to uh, present it uh, to you guys in terms of making the uh, presentation uh, easier and uh, simpler to grasp. Okay, so we go to modules, forms, and then manage, then the system will bring us to a page where it presents all the forms that uh, we created, okay? In this case, we've created uh, the membership form called area of interest, so let's pull it up. And I should notice it's the same as the uh, a create or set up a page, but this time, uh, some of the uh, fields are already populated. I named it a area of interest, categorize it under membership. Um, it's good to categorize your forms, especially if you have a lot of forms, make it easier for you to group them and search for them. Okay. Configuration, we recommend locking the form. This will prevent accidental uh, erasure or deletion from fellow admins. Share form submission. If this is enabled, you'll see a, a, an additional tab that will appear in here. It means that we're sharing the uh, results of that form to other groups or contacts in your member portal. And the system will ask you, who do you want to share this, uh, uh, the result of this form? It can be based on membership category. In this case, I just checked off all those contacts under individual membership uh, categories who can access the form, or it can be based on organization categories, having those contact demographics, or if you can cherry pick specific contacts that you wanna you know, have access to this particular form. Now, how does it look like on the uh, member portal? So on the member portal, here is the uh, form analytics page, form and then analytics. So it will, it will bring us to this page, here is the form that we were working on, area of interest, boom. So you can see the responses uh, of contacts that submitted this form, okay? So if that's enabled, you're sharing that form responses to your members that are checked off in this setup, okay? Let's go back to the setup page. Launch form editor, when we click on this button, it will bring us to the page where we can formulate the questions on the form. Let's click it open. But, so since we've created this form already, we will be receiving this warning or a message that it's already published and in use. Some have completed the uh, forms already. So any adjustment that we make, like um, deleting a question or adding it up, definitely impacts the, uh, the report, right? So uh, we need to understand that uh, implications, okay? Uh, so we click, I understand, and I wish to continue to proceed. So uh, up uh, on top, you'll see the different uh, types of uh, uh, question styles. First one is text input. Uh, you're basically asking your respondents to type a specific response to a question that you've uh, entered. Memo text area, synonymous with text input, but the difference is on a memo text area, it, it gives your respondents much leeway in typing, meaning a much larger a field to type. One example of this is if you are trying to collect their bio or biography, okay? If you're collecting date-related details like birth dates or uh, graduation dates or dates of their membership, you can use the date picker option. 
If you want to collect email address, use the email address tile. If you want to collect documents, if you want them to upload specific documents like uh, the diplomas or certificates or license, copy of their license for you to verify, you can use this file upload option. And then the rest are question types, radio buttons, vertical, radio buttons, horizontal, checkbox, vertical, horizontal, and a drop down single, just like what we did in this uh, spec. Okay, but just just a, a note uh, uh, on this question styling. If you want your members to um, to choose more than one response on the multiple choice of answers that you're that that you that you're asking them, use a checkbox option because the rest, the radio buttons and the drop down single, will only allow them to choose one response on the multiple choice list of answers that you presented. So checkbox will allow them more than one response, okay? So once you've chose which styling that you wanna use, just uh, grab it and drag it into this page, okay? And work on it. Let's delete this, okay? So once it's already on the screen, um, oh, I forgot to mention about the header. Uh, I uh, I would recommend putting a header. That way it'll be much more formal. Like in this case, I've uh, created a header and named it membership additional questions. And that will, you know, show on top of the uh, form itself. Okay. And the iterator. Um, this is a very useful uh, feature when you wish to allow the user to fill in one or more responses to a specific question. If we drag this down, you'll see an iterator start, an iterator end uh, um, uh, section, and then just uh, drag in between it the type of question that you want to ask. I, I've, been, I've used text input in here, and I'm asking a family member uh, type of uh, question. So if we translate it to the form, here is what it looks like actually. We go to uh, uh, our CRM profile page as an example for the sample contact, Jerry Dean. Um, if we click on membership MMS section, we'll see this contact's responses to the membership form, okay? Pull it up. And then scroll down. This uh, this is the basic information that we've collected on the uh, uh, application page, and then on the membership questions. If you remember, yeah, we're asking them their area of interest, and here is the iterator, family details. So they can add as many as um, family members as they want. That's the purpose of the iterator. Then. Click save extended fields as a CRM. You can update this uh, page. By the way, since we are already here, this is the um, membership of form responses. And at the bottom, this is how the directory form would look like. Okay, you can update it as well and save it. Okay, so let's go back to the setup page. Um, so once you've uh, dragged down the uh, the type of question, click setup, and it will bring us to this page, typing the type of question and the possible answers to that specific question, type it down and click add answer button. If you have a long list of uh, possible answers, uh, instead of typing them one by one in here, which is a bit tedious, um, another useful way of uh, being smart about it so that you can uh, put the answers uh, in an easy way is clicking on the paste answer option. If you have the list in a notepad, Word document, or Excel file, just paste the possible answers in here and click go, and the system will populate this section according so accordingly. So it'll make our lives easier. Okay. And then if you want the system to make this as a mandatory question to be filled up or answered, click on the required button in here, okay? You might be wondering what's the properties tab, okay? This is an important aspect of uh, the uh, forum question creation. Let's click on the properties tab. Then we'll see a lot of uh, options to uh, 
uh, to consider. The first one, you're basically telling the system to make this question, the first question to appear on membership application. So once someone appear, uh, applies for a membership, uh, 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 for a membership, this question will appear in addition to the basic questions that's being asked. And if this is checked off as well, you want it to appear on the renewal form for them to review. And uh, this third one, you're allowing members to update their initial response. The fourth one, for office use only, if this is checked off, notice what happens. The, the first three are removed, mainly because you're telling the system that this question is just for the admin only, just for uh, those that have access to the CRM. It won't show on the application nor in the renewal, and um, contacts won't be able to update it. It's only for the admins, and it's it's only you that can that, that can see that specific question and response on the CRM page in here, okay? It's it's not member facing, but it's only for the admins use, okay? Include in the list builder. So you're basically telling the system, I want to include this question in the list builder criteria. The list builder, by the way, is a very useful versatile tool where you generate a report based on attributes or criteria that you tell the uh, uh, re uh, report uh, what to generate. So as an example, let's go to a list builder, okay? This is the list builder. An example is Ottawa list that we created. Um, to pull a report for someone who responded to a particular question in a membership form, we go to the membership criteria in here, and then we click on membership form question. And then we look for the title of that form that we we're working on a while ago, which is area of interest. And then we look for that uh, uh, for that uh, question. I'm not sure if that's the one. Let's take it off again. So it's... Uh, Yep, area of interest, I think that's the one. Please tell us your area of interest. And then we're basically telling the system, I want uh, contacts that have uh, chosen technology as their area of interest. And once we check that off, save, and the system will show us those contacts that have chosen that specific response only. Okay, so that's the use of uh, that checkbox, including that question in the list builder. The next one will be include it in form analytics in the CRM, okay? So on the CRM, uh, the form analytics is where we generate a report of all the responses of that form. And we're basically telling the system, I want this question to be included in the reports. So form analytics actually be here, uh, going to modules, form, and then form responses. It will bring us to this page area of interest, we click on it, being the form that we are working on, and um, we'll, we'll be presented with the list of contacts that responded to the form. If we click view, we'll see that question being available in the report, okay? The next one is synonymous with the previous one, including uh, this question in the member portal form analytics. So the form analytics that we've uh, accessed a while ago is in the CRM. Now the form analytics can also be in the member portal in here, okay, under forms and then analytics, okay? And then you can click on view the same way that we did on the CRM form report section, okay? And then, <clears throat> And then the uh, last one is create a filter in the form analytics. How does it look like? Well, it basically creates a filter. So we go to the form report. Here is a form response filter. So that question or response are, are filterable, meaning we're telling the re uh, this, uh, the, this report, I want you to show anyone who just chose sports. And then the system will just uh, limit uh, those respondents or contacts that have responded to this particular question, okay? So creating a criteria <clears throat> or a search criteria. And then by the way, on the CRM 
farm report section, you have the ability to export this to Excel, okay? Now, the rest of the uh, tiles in here, they are not applicable uh, for a membership uh, form. It's applicable only for uh, the directory form, okay? Now, we'll, 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 we'll hop into a directory form quickly. That way we can show you how they uh, how, how they function, okay? So we go to the form, manage, and let's pull up the directory form that we created for this exercise. Volunteer days, okay? <clears throat> so again, we go to uh, the launch form editor section. Click I understand, okay? And the setup page, Again, on the properties, um, same set of uh, uh, functionalities or features. I'm basically telling the system the volunteer days question. I want it appear on the application form, renewal, allow members to update it, and so forth and so on. I'm allowing it to appear in the list builder and the form analytics. However, on the second half, which is display in public website directory and display in member portal directory for this response. If you have your directory um, embedded in your public website and you want this question to appear on the, on the um, uh, profile of your directory members, you can check this off. It can be on by default. If it's on by default without force, that means they can remove it. But if it's forced, they cannot remove that specific response. Okay. Let's see how it looks like. So we go to the member portal. <laughs> okay. And then we go to uh, a directory, which is the member directory. And we pull up, uh, as an example, Jerry Dean. Here is uh, Jerry Dean's response to that particular question is being displayed in here. So if that's unchecked, you won't see this particular information in here, okay? So that's how it functions, okay? Let's go back to this page. The next one will be a directory search criteria, be it in the member portal or on your public directory, okay? Again, just like in the form, analytics page where we're creating a search uh, a search filter criteria, we can do the same in your directory. So if you go back to directory, here it is. We created a search uh, filter criteria and they're ba basically telling the uh, directory, I want you to show contacts that are available only on Saturdays. And the system will show you the result. In this case, Sunday, it's only Jerry that uh, <clears throat> want to volunteer on that particular date. Okay. So that's the um, membership uh, form and directory form. Now, how do we attach those forms to the membership category and in the directory? So as an example, let's go to a membership category. We go to membership category setup. And let's choose associate. So if you go to statistics and category, sorry, membership, and then category setup, the system will bring us to this page that lists all your membership categories. And let's pull associate membership as an example. And then let's uh, click on membership application form. Well, the page is loading. Let's wait for it to load. There you go. If you notice, this setup page carries all the attributes that we're collecting to your members, the basic attributes. And then if you want to attach that membership form, or what we call as well extended field form, we go to custom question fields. Okay. Oh, oh, I don't wanna exit the page and then click yes in here. So the page still loading. Let's wait for it to load. And then we'll click yes in a moment once the page loads. Okay. There, I click yes. And then I'll choose a specific membership form, which is area of interest. 
and then scroll down the page. Don't forget to click save membership. Okay. Whenever you do any updates in any pages of the program. Okay. How about the directory form? How do we attach it or connect it to a directory? Okay. So we go to a directory. Okay. In this case, the members directory, we can go to modules, directory, manage directories, and then choose members directory. And then scroll down the page on the search form. Choose the form that we want to attach and click save. Okay. There you go. So that's how you attach a directory form to the directory. Okay. Now the analytics of the form we showed you a while ago, it's on the form section uh, by going to modules, form, and then form responses. It's where you see the different uh, types of uh, forms that uh, we've uh, uh, presented to our contacts for them to fill up. <clears throat> okay, you can, fill, you can use these filter types, searchable by name and searchable by types and categories as well. And you can see form analytics as well on the member portal by going to the member portal, forms, and then analytics, okay? If you allow them to be displayed in here, okay? Now that's about membership and directory form, okay? Now how about web submission form, okay? You might be asking, um, what's the difference between a web submission form and those membership form and directory form? Well, web submission form is basically, well, it's a, a same type of uh, data collecting form, but it's standalone. You do not have to attach it to a specific module, like attaching it to an application form, or attach it to the directory form so members or contacts can uh, can uh, uh, submit their responses or have access to it. It's a standalone form where you can invite your members or anyone have ag having access to your member portal to complete a form, or you can send it uh, via an email to your members or contacts outside of member 365, which they can uh, complete, or you can embed it to your public site and then they can complete it again outside of member 365. Now, how do we set up a web submission form? Okay, so let's go back to the program and go to our CRM page. Okay. <clears throat> Again, it's available on the modules, forum, and the create page, web submission. Click on create button. Again, for the purpose of this uh, training or webinar, let's uh, pull up one that we've already created. We go to modules, forms, and then uh, manage form. And then let's pull up uh, potluck party, web submission. Now, I'm beginning to get to feel hungry. <laughs> so potluck party. So we've named this potluck party. Uh, they're a membership uh, category, categorizing it again. Okay. And uh, one thing that's uh, different from the membership uh, and directory forms, the question setup. There's an option in here. Do you want us to display all the questions in one page or on a per question basis? Okay. Do we allow resubmission of the form? If yes, how many times, okay? Again, locking the form and sharing form submissions. It's in this last tab. Again, we'll let those under the individual membership categories have access to uh, uh, the results of that form in the member portal, okay? And one thing that's um, uh, unique about this form is that uh, you can tell the system to notify admins if someone submits a form. So you can enter the uh, email address of an admin in here. So when someone submits a form, they will be notified of it, okay? Open and close date, you're, you're basically telling the system, I want this form to be live on 
this specific date and it will be taken down after the close date, okay? And then the messages, okay? Since we're, ha we're having this form available in the member portal, you can have an instruction message that pops up when they click on the form. Any instruction that you want to convey to them on how they should be um, completing the form or how it is important to, to complete this form, okay? And a submit message, basically thanking them once they submit the form, basically thanking them um, for submitting and the next steps, what they need to expect, most probably. And then uh, the question and answer uh, section, you'll see the same launch form editor again button. If you click on it, it will show you uh, the same formatting on how we set up uh, questions on the membership and directory form. It should be the same format or the same manner in here, okay? And then access. So who do you want to um, uh, uh, which group or specific persons you want this form to be completed, basically? Again, is it will it be based on the membership category affiliation, organization categories, contact demographic, specific contacts, okay? Or through a list builder, okay? So you can create a list in your list builder and choose that specific list. And you're basically telling the system only those that are in the list builder can access this specific uh, form, okay? Here is the... Uh, uh the the opportunity where you're telling the system i want this to be made public meaning you're publishing this form to your public site you can either embed this code and put it on your site so that they can complete this web form in your public site or you can basically grab this link put it in your site or put it on an e-blast as well okay now how this form looks like okay in the web uh in in the member portal if we go to the member portal okay go to forms instead of analytics that's a report tied we go to forms and then the system will show us all the forms that this contact can complete like in this case potluck party we click on it <clears throat> here's the uh messaging that we typed in a while ago, hit continue. And then this is how the form would look like, okay? You might be wondering, why is it that we still need to uh, <clears throat> collect first and last name, email address? Well, the reason being is that on the uh, contact, uh, sorry, in the setup page and the public link, if we, if we are embedding this on your public site outside of member 365, anyone that's answering this uh, form outside of member 365, the system will have no way of accounting who completes the form, mainly because it's completed outside of member 365. That's why when you're making it available outside of the program, we recommend asking their first name, last name, and even email address so you have an accounting as who completed the form. In the form report, you will see it this way, right? If you click on potluck party, <clears throat> we have two submissions. One was completed within member 365 and we see the first name and last name in here. But the one that's completed outside of member 365, you'd notice that the name is not in there. It says web submission. So this is an indication that it was completed outside of the program, it was completed on a public site, okay? But if you're collecting the first name, last name, and email address, you'll have that information handy. Let's click on view, and this is how it looks like, okay? All right, so the reports, again, for the analytics for both the membership category, uh, sorry, the membership form, and then the directory form and web form, they're all lumped in here in the forms and then form responses, okay? They're all in here. And aside from, from uh, seeing the responses for each contact in the CRM page, 
in the membership MMS section. Again, this is an admin view. You'll see the uh, membership form and directory form responses in here. You'll see them as well on the member portal under forms and analytics, okay? And that's for web submission form. Best practices, best practice number one, ensure that you lock the form, okay? That way to prevent accidental uh, erasure or deletion from fellow admins, it happens. So make sure you lock the form. Best practice number two, ensure important questions are set to be answered on a mandatory basis. The required field needs to be enabled, okay? To prevent them from proceeding without answering that specific question, okay? Best practice number three, make sure questions are set to appear on membership application or renewal if needed. That checkbox option, if you uh, if those are checked off, those questions will be asked during the application and renewal process, okay? And best practice number four, make sure the forms are attached to membership categories and directories, most spe specifically for membership form and directory form. Web forms, we're okay, we don't have to, um, attach it to uh, any membership category or directory form, but make sure the access points are set up as well, okay? Basically telling the system uh, the type of contacts that need to access uh, that specific web form. All right, okay. Do we have any questions? Again, if you have any questions, please write them down, the question and answer or Q&A uh, icon at the middle of your Zoom screen, okay? We'll uh, wait a few uh, moments for some questions. So I guess there are no questions, but if you have some questions along the way or uh, further down the road, you can always go to uh, our ticketing system, okay, or live chat, okay. You can reach out to us and ask us specific questions, not just for this module or any module of the program, and we're <clears throat> more than happy to assist you with regards to your concerns. Your help desk uh, section in your program is your lifeline. We have knowledge-based articles for different modules that will help and guide you on how you can utilize them to better manage your membership. We have instructional videos as well on our YouTube channel. Please visit uh, those very short but direct videos. And uh, if you have premium support, you can uh, access us through live chat. Our chat team is open 9 a.m. till 4 p.m. Monday to Friday, Eastern Standard Time. And of course, you can book a Zoom call. Uh, that way, we can hop on a call and then discuss any concerns that you may have. Again, thank you so much for being here in this webinar. And we recommend to always visit our website for future webinars that deals with some of the modules that are available in your program. Again, thank you so much. Take care. Thank you.